I'd like to introduce you to another project that I've been working on in my MIDI module set that I've been building. This one is a sound module and it's based on the YM3812. This is the sound chip that was used in the Sound Blaster as well as the Adlib music card. These have been around for a long time but they still have like a great sort of nostalgic feel to them and they produce some really great sound. Now this particular setup has two uh, of those sound chips in it and everything is controlled by an AVR128 DA28 uh, microcontroller. You've got some button inputs here um, that are fed into the microcontroller and you also have a rotary encoder. So the way that this is going to be arranged when it's actually built into a module is you're gonna have the, the rotary encoder over here on the right, and then these four buttons will be kind of right here underneath the screen, and then these four buttons will be underneath those. And so you're gonna have this sort of one-to-one -one correspondence between this button and say this attack setting, and this button and uh, the envelope type here, for example. Now let's take a listen to what this actually sounds like. Uh, if I play a note, okay, so what you're hearing is actually a two operator sound, and you can see the two operators on the screen here. One of them is in this blue, and the other one is in the red. So if I play a note, you're going to hear the red operator first. Uh, because it has a, a much sharper attack value, and then you're going to hear that blue envelope after that. Now, of course, I can change any of the properties of the sound by adjusting the settings. One of the things I really wanted to focus on in the way that this module is constructed is the visualization of the two operators mixing together. So here again, we're seeing this in additive synthesis mode where it is taking the two operators and just kind of mixing them together. But we can put it into a different mode. If I flip over to the next menu of settings here um, by selecting the algorithm and then changing it into FM synthesis mode. Now for this visualization, instead of representing each of the envelopes independently, this one uses the uh, second operator to show how the sound volume changes over time, and then the first operator to show how the timber changes over time. Uh, and that's expressed by changing the color of the envelope. Now this is super helpful when you want to adjust things and have an intuition for how the sound is going to change. So for example, here I'm increasing the level value, which is actually decreasing the level of the modulating operator, and you can see that it is less bright. And that is a very natural way to kind of see what's going on and be able to adjust things on the fly. Now, of course, every single parameter is available through the this menu and the menu prior. So you're basically able to change 16 different things independently and everything is one button click away. And then you're just adjusting the rotary encoder to change the value. Now, if you don't wanna go through the process of setting all this stuff up, uh, you can select from a set of different patches. Now, the way that the patch thing works is each of those 16 MIDI channels is assigned to a different instrument. And when you play a note, or when it detects a note coming in through MIDI, it is going to choose that instrument, load it into the chip, and then play the note. And because of that, I can set the instruments for each of the channels independently. And for example, here, let's say I wanted to edit this one. I can flip through all of the different options and find one that I like. Let's say that I want this electric guitar and I can select it. And now that's the instrument that's assigned. Now, of course, I don't necessarily have to preview everything. So there's an option to turn preview off so I can do this silently. And then you don't hear any changes or kind of preview of that instrument. Once I've selected it, I can come back to the channel menu. Now, anything that's selected here, so for example, if I move down to Honky Tonk Piano here, 
and I push on this, I'm gonna go into the visualization for whatever I've picked there. And that's important because you'll see in a second, you can also edit drum sounds and everything as well. So now let's dive into the drum section. Now this is always assigned to channel 10. It's kind of like a, a special assignment here. Uh, you can change all of the other patches to be whatever instrument you want, but not channel 10. Uh, now if I edit MIDI channel 10 here, then you get a different interface. So instead of showing all the instruments that are associated with this, I see a list of notes. And every note on the keyboard is going to be assigned to a different drum sound. And I can adjust which sound it's assigned to in the same way that I could adjust patches for the instrument. So I could take this F sharp, for example, and then I can come in here and I can pick a different sound. Of course, I can preview sounds as well. So let's say that I want this one, I can select it, and then this one is assigned to that F sharp in the third octave. Now, just like I could change the instrument settings by uh, moving into these kind of visualization menus here, um, you can do the same thing with drums. So as long as you've selected any particular drum track, when you go into the visualization mode, you're gonna be able to adjust the same parameters. So now that we're back in the drum menu, I wanna show you one other thing that's kind of interesting. So let's let's take our Arturia beat step. We're gonna go into drums. We're gonna create like just a, you know, simple pattern here. Okay, so we've got a couple of things going on from our drum patterns here. Nothing crazy, nothing fancy, but uh, one thing you'll notice is that uh, there's a little green thing appearing here. And what that is, is actually indicating what notes are being played. This makes it a lot easier to come in and say, oh, I wanna adjust this particular note, the acoustic bass drum, for example. I don't like that sound, so I'm gonna hit patch. So maybe I like the low tom better, I can pick that. And now um, this particular note is assigned to low tom. Now, one other thing you can do is, let's say that I, uh, have this second, you know, note here, but I want to reassign the note itself. You can also do that. So I can select the note and then I can turn it down. And now it's also C3. And so anything that's going to this first C3 here is also going to go to the second one. And I'm going to get two different sounds as a result of that. So let's um, go ahead and just add like some random sequence here. I'm going to Set this into minor mode. I'm going to change a bunch of stuff here. Let's pick some random notes. Now that there's music playing, you might want to go in and adjust um, your instrument. Now this is playing on uh, channel one here, so I can come in and I can say, maybe I wanna uh, lower my sustain value, make it a little bit punchier. And then maybe I wanna add another random melody here. Let's put it in harmonic minor. We'll just randomly adjust things. So one other thing you can do with this is you could, because there's two different chips, you can actually slightly alter the pitch of each of the two chips. You can detune them, and I can detune one chip higher, one chip lower, and that's going to spread out that detuning de across the uh, audio spectrum. You can also do panning, uh, so if I select panning, this is going to send it to one chip or the other one. So anyway, this is uh, kind of the experiment that I've been working on. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave those. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, and if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and I'll try to make more of them. Thanks.